Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video I will share my best tips when it comes to building a Jetpack Compose based design system for your mobile app. So a custom design system. In case you don't know me, I'm Philip, and since 2019 I'm doing nothing else than developing software with Kotlin. So if you want to learn more about developing with Kotlin for the full software stack with over a thousand videos, then make sure to subscribe to my channel. So what actually is a design system? If you have some sort of Jetpack Compose background and you've developed Jetpack Compose apps before, then you've worked with Material 3 components. And if we take a look here on the Material Design website, then we actually see multiple components here that in the end make up a design system as a whole. So these are the default UI components that we work with when using Jetpack Compose. So most prominently, for example, buttons. If we open this buttons category here, then the design system in the end says, how your reusable UI components look like. So here with a case of normal fill buttons that would be one part of the design system of Material 3 design, you have certain specs, for example, so how these buttons should look like, different states that your design system defines, whether an icon can, for example, be shown in addition. You have some guidelines that then outline what uh, spacing values would be, what allowed corner radius would be, here with the do's and don'ts, so which context these buttons could be used in this case, you of course have a category for accessibility. Well, and of course, Google has the resources to go into very much detail for every single of these Material 3 components here. But in the end, you can think of a design system just as a set of reusable general purpose UI components that implement and enforce styling and certain UX guidelines. So if we, for example, take a look at this app here, Notemark, this is one of the coding challenges in the Mobile Dev Campus, link is below. In the end, an offline furious note-taking app. This app has a custom design system and people on the campus get access to these Figma mockups here where we can see, okay, for example, input fields, where each input field would be a design system component, and you can see these definitely look differently than the default Material 3 design input field. So we are working here with our own design system. Same things for buttons. Those aren't typical Material 3 design buttons. Floating action button, this one here has a gradient, while the Material 3 one doesn't. It outlines how certain list items look like. It outlines how a specific toolbar may look like. So these types of UI components that are in the end general purpose and reusable, and independent of the project itself, that is an important aspect of design system, that is what makes absolute sense to put in a separate part of your project that you can call your design system. So this maybe gives you an idea of what would be part of a design system, but let's also be explicit about what would not be part of a design system. And that is clearly anything that is specific to the context of the app you're building. So here, for example, you may have these design guidelines from your company. And your company has a specific branding style, specific brand color, specific brand font, and therefore may not just want to use these design system components, so their own branded buttons, their own branded text fields, just for this specific app, but maybe for multiple apps this company is developing. So these components should be reusable across apps. And if something should be reusable across apps, then the components themselves should not have any context of one specific project. So here, for example, if we switch and go down here, for example, where is that? Here, this is a great example, this note list screen in offline mode. So it's an offline first app where uh, there is a little offline indicator being shown when we're offline. And while having a toolbar as part of your design system would make perfect sense, and that's also what Material 3 design, of course, offers, what wouldn't make sense is to now go inside of Android Studio here, and this is now a sample, compose multi-platform app completely blank, but if we would now create such a reusable toolbar component here and say, okay, this is our toolbar, whatever, <laughs> let's just call it toolbar, make this a composable function, say, okay, we have our own styled toolbar. What wouldn't make sense is to now pass in something like is connected. So a Boolean that this toolbar composable then uses in order to decide whether to show this connection icon or not, because this would again be too specific for this project. There may be another project that simply doesn't use this slot here to show a connection icon. But the moment you encode this here by passing in an is connected boolean, you would say every toolbar in my design system has to have that connected icon. What would instead make much more sense is to make this a so-called slot-based layout. So rather than actually passing in a clear boolean that tells what this toolbar is used for in which specific context, we could say, we give this maybe a specific name, so what this slot for this icon is called, like maybe an extra icon, and we then say, we simply pass a composable lambda here instead. Because this way, we don't force our toolbar to use this icon slot for a connection icon, but we rather leave it up to the caller of this toolbar to decide, okay, 
Here in this Notemark app, so in this app specifically, we want to use this slot for a connection icon. But in another project, it may not even be used at all, so you can leave the lambda blank. Or you swap it out with a different type of icon that may be used in that other project. And these so-called slot-based layouts is also what Material 3 design works with. Maybe you've worked with a scaffold before. A scaffold is nothing else than a layout that Material 3 design adds that in the end just outlines which of the typical Material 3 UI components that are very often used together on one screen should be put where on the screen with which types of spacings. So a scaffold lets you add a specific toolbar, a scaffold lets you add a floating action button and it will automatically arrange this here with the right spacings to the right side or the right edge of the screen and the bottom one. A scaffold would let you show certain snack bars which are also Material 3 component. So if you have certain layouts that have the sole purpose of aligning components from your design system, then that layout, that slot-based layout, will also be part of your design system. So when now implementing such a design system for an app like Nodemark, and we take a look here at these reusable components like input fields, buttons, uh, the font is of course also a part of a design system, then a common question when implementing this design system in code and really building these components as composables is how much should you depend on Material 3 as a library? Because as you probably know, if you've built some uh, Compose apps before, every Compose app by default has Material 3 components that you can uh, build the foundation of your app's UI on. So if we create a button here in Compose, then this button by default, if we don't give it any extra styling, sticks to the Material 3 styling guidelines. Same thing for floating action buttons. All these default Material 3 components are already there in Compose the moment you create a project. So now a question worth asking is, if you build such a custom toolbar component like we have here, for example, should you build this from absolute scratch, just with the absolute basic layouts like box, column here, or row as a root layout that you then style with the modifiers in Compose? Or do you make this custom toolbar depend on the material design toolbar? So here there's also, um, what is it called? It's called app bar. Um, here, top app bar. That is the material design toolbar that also gives you certain slots here for title, navigation icon, and so on. So does it make sense to actually depend on these Material 3 design components for your own design system in a Compose-based app? And usually I would say, yes, it makes sense to actually reference Material 3 design components and not create your UI from scratch by just uh, wrapping everything in boxes and columns and giving these stylings with modifiers. And the reason is simply that in Material Design, a lot of thought from Google's developers and designers, of course, already went into that design system. So even if you just take a look here on the Material Design website, for every single little piece of UI component, you can find clear guidelines, accessibility. And if you just go over that for a moment, you see how many things they actually already thought of when it comes to a UX perspective. So how nice it is to use these components for the user that you probably don't even have in your mind. And the thing is now, that if you make your own design system depend on these Material 3 components, then you automatically stick to a lot of UX best practices that are kind of encoded in the Material 3 components in Jetpack Compose. So you don't need to think of these anymore. Best example would be you have an icon button. Icon buttons aren't simple icons that are displayed. That's why there is a difference between an icon button, which is a clickable icon, and a normal icon. Icon buttons, for example, have an increased touch area because an icon can be quite small, some people have very big fingers. So from a UX perspective, it can make sense to say, hey, the overall radius around this icon, where we say this is what we trigger as a click, that is simply increased for an icon button. So that even people with thick fingers are able to properly press that button without being frustrated. Other examples include spacing values, for example, between components in a toolbar or so. There are already so many thoughts that were put into these kinds of things here for material design that you can usually comfortably depend on these material design components and of course still style them based on your needs, then your components will look like the ones in your mockups. So here you can definitely use and reference the Material 3 components and make them look like exactly this here. So it doesn't look like Material Design anymore, but under the hood, they still stick to the typical best practices in regards to UX and UI design that Material 3 already encodes. Of course, if it's a more complex component where you also don't have a direct equivalent in Material Design, then you just have to create it from scratch with box layouts, uh, rows, columns, and so on. Another question is, in regards to theming, should we stick to the material theme that we get in Compose? So here, uh, he in we type material theme, this one here, this gives us access to our color scheme, to our typography, to our shapes if we want that. So Material 3 design doesn't only come with these UI components that we see here, 
but also with a lot of so-called color tokens. So pretty much use cases for certain colors. So we have background colors, surface colors, we have primary color, secondary, tertiary, and so on that you can simply reference in your app and also support light and dark theme that way. So you could now also ask yourself, should you depend on these material three color tokens in your own design system, or maybe create your own kind of color tokens. And in most cases, I can again say, use what material three gives you that is already baked into a compose as a framework. You have this, uh, these theming values here be available by design. And since this material theme is also pretty easily extendable, if you then say you have actually more colors than material three gives you or lets you use, then you can just extend the theme with any other color tokens that you want to use and reference in your app. Same thing for typography styles. If you really want your own theming approach, maybe if you're working in a big company, then I could imagine that uh, this would be a thing to do there and nothing is holding you back but keep in mind that this is going to be a lot of work and another tip that i can give you here is if you really have such a design system that you want to keep reusable so you maybe have multiple apps that should all stick to the same custom design system it makes absolute sense to put this in a separate module so here you would go to your root package new module make this a in this case it's a cartoon multi-platform app if you're working in an android code base you would make this an android library but here, Carta Multi Platform Shared Module, you call this design system. And yeah, I would need to update my greater version here for this project. Uh, but in the end, you then click Finish and you would have a dedicated module that is in the end nothing else than a library that you can also just uh, include in other projects, just like you add existing libraries to your built Gradle file, like here. And that really prevents you from always having to redefine the same components from project to project. If you learn some new things here about content development and you say, hey, um, you maybe want to work together with me and my team on a one-to-one -one basis, then I actually have a mentorship program for that. Over the course of 12 weeks, we will work on your coding skills individually. So if that sounds cool to you, then you can actually apply to that program for free. Link is down below. And other than that, thanks so much for watching. I will see you back in the next video. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye-bye.